could collapse on you. Suspended in the ceiling of these glassy caves, you can see rocks. Some are only small, some are quite big, and you know that at some point, eventually, these things are going to just fall out of the ceiling, and if you're stood underneath them, you're going to get very little warning about where it's coming from. You're kind of on the move in slow motion, so to speak, always with that element of risk that these things are alive and they could just collapse at any moment. When we exit the caves, there is a sense of achievement and a sense that we've been somewhere where nobody's been before and there's a good chance nobody might ever go back because it will disappear within a few months' time. And that's very exciting. So explore these extraordinary blue crystal caves while you can. They may not be there next year. Lake Havasu, Arizona, April 2011. The coolest looking clouds, they look like jellyfish all over the place. This observer is right on the money. These fantastical clouds are technically called Altocumulus castellanus. But their wispy tendrils have inspired cloud experts to rename them jellyfish clouds. Katya Friedrich from the University of Colorado Boulder explains what's causing them. A jellyfish cloud is nothing else than a cloud that's trying to rain out. So you have rain droplets leaving the cloud, falling down, and as they fall down into a very dry environment, they evaporate, so they never really make it to the ground. And then you see these fussy tentacles that go down, which is nothing else than small raindrops evaporating. These tentacles are actually known as virga. Cloud expert Gavin Pretter Penny reveals more about their strange shape. The nature of the air can vary greatly in our atmosphere. It's very, very stratified. So as the precipitation falls, it can descend into a layer with quite a stiff wind. This can make it appear to be whipped along, and so it always looks like the sort of thing that would sting you. If you see a jellyfish cloud, this is actually a really nice phenomenon. You can take pictures, you will not get wet because you can make sure that all these raindrops are being evaporated. And it's also a very nice indication of a very dry environment. Coming up, a freak wave causes chaos in China. And why Yosemite's rivers turn into giant slurpees. Here it comes. Hey, you working for Nature Made too? Yup. Go team! You've heard about friendly probiotics, but why take one that only targets half your digestive tract? New Nature Made Advanced has dual strains that target your whole tract. Part of the new line of probiotics from Nature Made. Zantac Heartburn Alert! Stop! Nexium can take 24 hours to work. Zantac's different. Zantac rushes relief in as little as 30 minutes. For relief without the wait, try Zantac. No pill relieves heartburn faster. Americans drink 48 billion bottles of water every year. That's enough plastic bottles to stretch around the earth 230 times. Each Brita filter can replace 300 of those. Clean, clear Brita water. Nothing is better. Ten years ago, we were united by the tragedies of Hurricanes Katrina and Rita. Today, we are united by hope. Sitgo helped those in need then, and in the decades since, we've heightened our social responsibility efforts to further improve people's lives. Since 2014, to commemorate the hurricanes that brought us together, Sitgo has pledged nearly $2 million to continue restoration along the Gulf Coast. Visit SitgoCaringForOurCoast.com. Sitgo. Fueling good. When you have a migraine, you'll reach for anything to make the pain go away. Truth is, most pain relievers don't work like Excedrin migraine. It relieves my pain starting in 30 minutes. That's fast, plus sensitivity to light and sound. Excedrin migraine. Wow, that was fast. All we need to sell Strongbow Heart is ice. So sorry, Sir Patrick. Strong You're fired. Fired? Yeah, fired. How dare Strongbow! Sleep. Remember when it welcomed you like a friend? Then it became more elusive. But why? When you have insomnia, it may affect the wake neurotransmitters in your brain, disrupting your wake and sleep messages. 
Balsamra is a prescription medicine for adults who have trouble falling asleep. Balsamra is thought to help turn down wake messages by targeting and inhibiting the action of orexin, a neurotransmitter that plays a central role in sending wake messages. Only Balsamra works this way. Do not take Balsamra if you have narcolepsy. When taking Balsamra, don't drive or operate heavy machinery until you feel fully awake. Walking, eating, driving, or engaging in other activities while asleep without remembering it the next day have been reported. Balsamra should not be taken together with alcohol. Abnormal behaviors may include aggressiveness, confusion, agitation, or hallucinations. The temporary inability to move while falling asleep or waking up and temporary leg weakness have also been reported. In depressed patients, worsening depression, including risk of suicide, may occur. Alcohol may increase these risks. Side effects include next day drowsiness. Ah, <sighs> sleep. Ask your doctor about Belsanra. The Cheongtong River, Eastern China, August 2013. A vast wall of water, not downstream, but back upstream. It's not a tsunami, but a tidal bore. The Cheontung River has the world's largest, a long breaking wave of water known as the Silver Dragon. It's the river in reverse, and every year it attracts hundreds of thousands of spectators. And in August 2013, they're in for a surprise. The wave rears up 65 feet as it tears through the city of Hangzhou, ripping down steel fencing, smashing concrete walls, and injuring 30 people. A river normally flows into the ocean. Tidal bores happen when the ocean surges back into a river. As Randy Cervini explains, it's all caused by the movement of the tides. A tidal bore is the result of the gravitational pull of the moon. The gravity of the moon actually pulls not only our atmosphere, but it pulls the water up as well. Well, along the coast, if you pull the water up, that's going to cause the water to actually flow upriver. They're only recorded in around 70 rivers worldwide. It's a pretty rare phenomenon. You have to have the exact right conditions. The orientation of the river, the depth of the river, the coastal area, all of those play a factor. And that's why not every river in the world shows board. The Severn Estuary in southwest Britain has the second highest tidal range in the world. A wide bay funnels the full force of the Atlantic Ocean tide into a narrow river mouth and rushes it upstream triggering a perfect pour, which attracts another unusual sight. Groups of surfers making the most of waves, which can last hours, not seconds. Steve King holds the world record for the longest continuous wave ride, surfing the Severn Boar for an incredible nine and a quarter miles. There we go. I can really make the board work now, because the waves do all the work for us. The weather dictates everything about the tidal bore. If it's low pressure set out in the Atlantic, if we've had lots of rain, fresh water, and the direction of wind as well, that's the combination to a good tide. By the time the Severn bore finally exhausts itself, the river is less than 100 yards wide. Oh, it's pushing the last bits now. Under this tree. Woo, and that's it. Severn Bore is a relatively mellow surf experience. 7,000 miles away, a tidal bore in Sumatra is the exact opposite. The spectacular series of waves on the Kampar River can reach 20 feet high and travel at 25 miles per hour. The Kampar has a wide, shallow bay, but upstream, the river's cross section narrows, creating the classic funnel effect. The waves are so awesome, surfers risk crocodile-infested waters to ride them. But perhaps that's fitting behavior for one of the strangest spectacular weather phenomena on Earth.
Yosemite National Park, California, April 2010. Whoa, here it comes. Isn't that strange? Overnight, the crystal clear streams of water that flow through the national park have changed to powerful torrents of slushy ice. And it's behaving very weirdly. It's shooting out. Pile up. There it is going over there now. The slushy, goopy mass is a dramatic natural event usually seen in early spring in the park. Snowmelt is increasing, but nighttime temperatures can plummet below freezing. The freezing water generates weird ice crystals called frazzle ice. Julian Struva explains the water's transformation to giant slurpee. Frazzle ice is the initial ice formation that happens in, say, turbulent water. So say you have rivers that are constantly moving. If you were to cool that water down below the freezing point so that you have super cooled water. Ice crystals will start to form and we call that initial ice crystal formation frazzle ice. Three cubic feet of water can contain a million frazzle ice crystals. Frazzle ice tends to be these small needle shaped ice crystals and they're very reactive. They're ready to attach to each other so once they start forming it's sort of this chain reaction process and they'll start attaching to each other and forming solid ice. This is why frazzle ice looks like an icy lava flow. When it meets an obstruction, it packs together in a solid body of ice, and the creek flows another way. Its unpredictable progress downstream is tracked by Yosemite Park naturalist Pete Devine. The frazzle ice has built up its own levee, and Yosemite Creek and uh, all of its uh, might is coming toward us. The force of the frazzle ice is so strong, it can tear bridges from their footings and demolish small buildings in its path. The formation of frazzle ice is all down to super cooling. Julian Struva demonstrates the phenomena in miniature. One way that we can achieve super cooled water is if we have very, very pure water. And so here's a bottle of purified water. It's been sitting outside for a couple hours. It has not frozen. And we can see the temperature outside here is about one degrees Fahrenheit. And so what I'm going to do is try to pour it in the glass and see what happens. So if you look in the water glass, you can see there's several little frazzle ice crystals that have started to form in the glass. And over time, they start to accumulate, and that just shows you how unstable supercooled water really is. It's ready to freeze, and just any small disturbance will cause it to freeze. And what started as tiny ice crystals can present a very real danger to the unwary. Here's where frazzle ice becomes quite dangerous because you can't tell how thick it is or how solid it is or how much water is underneath. If you were to walk out into this, you might make it a few steps and you might plunge through into icy moving water underneath this frazzle ice deposit on top. When the frazzle ice is flowing in Yosemite, it's probably a sign that winter is over. But no one should underestimate the power of this spring awakening in the park. Moscow, Russia, April 2012. It's green skies. When people go out, they find a strange green dust covering cars and buildings. Ominously, it's years to the day since the explosion at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. Rumors of a disaster around the Russian capital. to Randy Cervini. One of the initial concerns was that maybe there was a chemical leak that somehow toxic